Chapter 18 I walked with a hesitation in my step. I knew what I was going to say and do. I just didn't know exactly why I thought I should. I'd rehearsed the lines, but I was still wondering if I should say them. What right did I have? And even if I did have the right, did I have the guts to follow through? I spent the entire day in school thinking about those questions. Was Berta right? Was I strong? Was I strong enough? I turned into the park. I'd keep my eye open for anything that could cause me grief, but if trouble found me, then I'd take care of it. The metal bar was up my sleeve. If I had to use it today, I could. I would. I was going to find Jacques and talk to him. I had things I needed to th say, things he needed to... I just had to find him. Find him alone and sober enough that he could listen to me. It was strange, ironic, that I wanted to talk to him about his drinking, but I could only talk to him if he hadn't been drinking too much. I was just going to take the cut off to the tents when I saw Jacques. He was sitting on a bench. He had a cigarette in one hand and a brown paper bag in the other. He brought the bag up to his face. It was no big secret what was in the bag. I walked over until I was standing right beside him. He didn't seem to notice. Hello, Jacques, I said. He looked up and seemed surprised by my presence. Hey, Ian, good to see you. His words were slurred. His eyes glazed over. The smell of alcohol was incredibly strong. I was hoping to talk to you, I said. Talk away. You want a slug, he asked, holding the bag out toward me. What? I asked in shock, backing slightly away. You want a drink? Red wine, he said. He removed the bottle partway from the bag to show me the label. Not the best, but the best for four bucks can buy. I'm only 15, I said. I'm too young to drink. Since I was about 12, my parents always let me have a little glass of wine over dinner, he said. I don't want to drink, and I don't think you should be drinking either. My mouth felt dry. I really didn't know where this was going to go. Jacques took another sip from the bottle. Did you hear what I said, I asked. He lowered the bottle. I heard you. He raised the bottle again, this time tipping it farther back, back farther and longer and chugging down the wine. I reached over to grab the bottle. You shouldn't be doing that, I said. And you shouldn't be doing that, he snapped, shaking off my hand from the bottle. He staggered to his feet and started to walk away. I jumped up and chased after him. It's just that I think you should stop drinking, I said as I caught up and stopped right in front of him. I think you should leave. I can't do that. I won't do that. Mac told me about places that can help you to stop drinking. I don't need help. Yes, you do. You could go into, get into detox center and from there they could arrange for a treatment facility and I'm not going no place except to my tent. He started to walk away, but I blocked his way. If you stopped drinking, you wouldn't have to live in a tent. You could go home. Home, he asked. I haven't got any home. But you could. What do you really know about my life, he demanded. I know it can be better than it is now. I wasn't going to let him scare me. You don't know nothing, he pushed past me. It doesn't matter what happened in Rwanda, I shouted out. He stopped. He staggered back a few feet towards me. It does matter what happened, he snapped. Maybe nobody else cares. Maybe nobody else even remembers. But I remember, and I will never, ever forget. You can't, you can put it all behind you. You can put your life back together again. Suddenly his arm came up and he tossed a bottle of wine at me. It whizzed by my head and there was the sound of smashing glass as it crashed against the path behind me. I leapt into the air, spinning around, my heart jumping into my throat. You tried to hit me, I gasped. If I tried to hit you, I would have hit you. You see those shards of glass, he said, pointing the jagged pieces of the bottle on the ground? Do you think you can put them together again? Do you think anything or anybody could ever make it whole again? Well, do you? It's not just broken. It's shattered into a million pieces. It can never be put back together again. Never. And even if you could, through some miracle, make it whole again, you'd never be able to recapture what was inside the bottle. It's gone forever, that bottle. That's me. Nobody, nothing can ever put the pieces together again. And even if my life could be packed together again, it would never be the same. What was inside of me, he said, placing his hands on his chest. That is gone, gone. He walked away and I stood there, my mouth open, my mind empty.